Welcome to the Mighty Dragon. Yesterday, I caught up with Brahim Chab, fight choreographer and actor based out of Bangkok. I last spoke to Brahim in 2019, and I just wanted to know what he's been up to since. Thank you to Brahim for this interview. May I wish you all the very best, and I'll see you on the Mighty Dragon again soon. Hi, Brahim. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Very good. Glad it's Friday and all of that. (laughs) Well, um, where I am, you know, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, sometimes I forget which day it is. <laughs> oh, I thought that was just, uh, well, for me, an age thing. But I guess for you, it's your busy calendar. So. We last spoke in 2019. What have you been up to since? Oh, wow. Well, how can I, <laughs> what have I been up to? Well, uh, most of my life has been about working. I've been working a lot in the last couple of years. Uh, I've been doing uh, a few movies here and there. I've been doing, I worked on that movie, Jackie movie called Vanguard. I was the lead bad guy of that. Then uh, uh, then we had uh, the premiere, which was pushed to 2020 because of the COVID. Yeah. Uh, then after that, I went to uh, Indonesia. I did the Monkey Man there as a fight coordinator uh, and as an actor as well. And then... Um, I went to Lebanon as well. I worked there on a Netflix show. And then I worked on uh, the Assassin's Creed, uh, a few stuff for uh, the motion capture. Then I did Ghana Path. Uh, then I did Customs Frontline and I did Fight or Flight. So it's been like, a, yeah. I don't know how many projects is that. <laughs> That's been That's a lot crazy. of projects. Lots yeah. of traveling, lots of projects to work on. I see from your Instagram page that you're training as hard as ever. Has your training style changed over the years or do you stick to a tried and tested method? It did change a lot, actually, because uh, let's be honest, you know, as you grow older, you need to adapt uh, the way you train. You know, you're not going to be able to do a lot of uh, gymnastic training every day or like, you know, crazy jumping kicks every day. But what I do uh, mostly for the past, I would say, eight years now, I do a lot of grappling. So I became very uh, proficient in grappling, in wrestling, in uh, jiu-jitsu, Brazilian oh. jiu-jitsu. And I focus mostly on the, the no-gi aspect, which is, you know, like you train without uh, the gi uh, it's mostly it's better adapted for MMA and better adapted yeah. for uh, for what I'm looking for, and uh, you know I I train this mostly I would say maybe uh, when I have time four to five times a week. So yeah. I do class. Th- those are not classes that are you know stunt related. This is me training for. This is this this is the real thing this is not like i'm gonna go and someone is gonna give me his arm and he's gonna fly when i do like a wrist lock on him this this is yeah. you know this is like real martial art training and this is not this is good for movies but it's like i do it for self-defense mostly because right. this is the part that i like like i really like the self-defense part and being able to defend myself basically but you know, for the movies, you know, there is some good stuff to pick up. But um, yeah, that's mostly how I train these days. I do a lot of grappling and uh, mostly kickboxing on the bag to keep yeah. my legs uh, strong and a lot of uh, weightlifting, especially for the legs. Right. To keep okay. the base strong. I was going to ask if you were learning the grappling for the movies, but it's for yourself, your own no, learning. No, it's for my, no, yeah. yeah, it's for myself. Yeah. Because, you know, like there is grappling for movies, which is very easy to learn. You know, you don't need a lot. You need, you know, like a arm bar, how to take the back, uh, maybe a few takedowns, a triangle. And that's about it. It's very easy for movies, you know, but if you want, let's say to learn grappling the, the real way and the way to defend yourself or really like to, to go and compete, maybe if you like it. No, you need to you need to go and train in a gym where you're gonna have to spar with people, roll with people, and yeah. this is not something that I would say uh, a lot of stun guys or a lot of action performers are interested in because first of all, there's a risk of injury. Second, there is you know it's not gonna go your way. You are, you're gonna be humbled a lot. You're gonna right. eat a lot of humble pie when you go to those classes. So. Yeah. I like that. It keeps me grounded and uh, it's keeping me, you know, 
it, it keeps me in a way that I know what's real and what's not and what works for movies and what doesn't look good, what works for in real life and what works for movies. So I, I like this balance of like going like, okay, I have this stuff for the movies, but I need to be able to, you know, like to defend myself because I'm a martial artist. That's very important to know, to defend yourself as a martial artist. You know, you, you cannot just, for me, I cannot just be like, oh, well, I do movies. The first reason why I did martial art was, you know, you need to be able to defend yourself. So that's yeah. important in a way. Having another look at your Instagram account, um, life seems to be great for you in Bangkok, especially I, I loved your Valentine's post for your girlfriend. Ah, <laughs> yes. If my you wife. could teach my husband to, oh, for your wife, sorry, if you could yes. teach my um, husband to write these sorts of things, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I met I met my wife in, uh, in Hungary. You know, I met oh. my wife in Hungary. Uh, I actually she's a stunt performer and uh, I brought her to Hungary for a job and uh, I basically fell in love with her so here Aww. I am now back to Thailand and uh, I'm very happy it's like uh, you know I, I always wanted to have this part of my life uh, it was always lacking this personal uh, li uh, side of my life to have like somebody that I can click with so yeah. well and uh, I believe that you know my my wife, like I call her my wife, but we're not married yet. We're going to marry this year. But uh, I'm, I'm very, very happy that, um, that I, I met her. And um, so far, so good. I'm very, very happy. Life appears great for you in Bangkok. Is Asia the best place for you to be right now? Uh, I would say, you know, like over the years, I, I can be anywhere, man. I have this funny thing that I like to say. I can be on Pluto and I can book a movie. <laughs> you know, Pluto, the planet. <laughs> like, I, I like to say that. It's like, to, like, okay, uh, is it the best place for me to be in Asia? I would say in terms, in terms of health, I, I would say yes, because when I was back in France, I had a lot of terrible injuries. My whole left leg was completely shut down for two years almost. I did a lot of films with basically my left leg completely like injured in the back. The hamstring was completely shut down. And when I come back to a hot way, a, a warm weather, these things disappear. So yeah. to me, it's like, where is the best place to be? I would say right now, uh, it's more about my mental health. I don't really care about like, oh, am I going to book more work if I'm in France or am I going to book more work if I'm in Asia? Uh, when I was in Paris, I did the customs frontline with Mike, you know, Mike Leader. Yes. He's one of yes. the funniest people I've ever met and spoken yes. to. <laughs> yes. Yes. He's, he's the best. Uh, I did customs frontline with Mike when I was basically uh living in paris so they brought me to hong kong then on the other side then you know i did movies sometime when i was living in thailand and then i ended up going to england or or yeah. even uh, to bulgaria so it doesn't really matter where i am but right now since my wife uh is thai i would say being in thailand for me is a good place uh, yeah. also for training uh, it's great for me the weather is great and it's much cheaper than Europe especially yeah. for all this uh, like electricity crisis and power crisis yeah. that they have so I would say right now it's it doesn't really matter but um, I can always go back to France like you know we have plans maybe to go to France me and my wife so it's yeah. It's all depending, really. I, 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 like I say, I go where the river takes me. I'm not in a rush. That <laughs> sounds really good. <laughs> your, your Instagram states, no risk, no reward. What does this motto mean to you? Well, no risk, no reward. That's what I live for. So basically, it's like all this life, all this movie stuff, it's like a big gamble. Okay, like every time someone asks me like, Oh, well, uh, how can I get this? How can I get this in this line of work and all that? I always say it this way, well, you need to, to risk it. By this, I mean not being foolish and just jumping head first. What I mean by that is like, you need to, to take calculated risk in order to, 
to get what you want in life. So basically, like I, I can tell you, when I moved first to Thailand, when I was, I was 22 years old when I first moved here, uh, I, I came here with what, 200 euros in my pocket. And if I didn't take this risk of going there without knowing nobody, without having this kind of like uh, vision in my head that, okay, I'm gonna accomplish whatever is in my head, the plan that I laid. If I didn't take this risk, I wouldn't be right now talking to you about all these movies that I've done in the yeah. past. So yeah. like I said, no risk, no reward. If you just sit down and okay, you, you go through life without any risks at all and not even trying anything, well, whatever you want is not going to come to you. So you need to take that, I wouldn't say, like that calculated risk, be smart about the risk you choose to take, but don't be foolish and just like jump, just like, you know what I mean? Calculated yeah. risk. To keep taking yourself out of your comfort zone. Exactly. That's exactly yeah. what it is. Everybody needs to do that. You know, oh, comfort is ruining people's life. I don't say like yeah. comfort in a way that is like, okay, having a nice house or that's good. You, everybody needs to have like a nice place to stay and all that. But what I mean is like comfort is like not trying anything new, just like what you're yeah. doing yourself. Back then you had just interviews and now you have a like a podcast, which is even yes. better. Yeah, yeah, this is good. I love it. I, I actually am not a natural uh, talker, <laughs> so I'm, no, I'm a writer. Good. So. <laughs> no, this is yeah. good. This is lovely. Thank you. Since the pandemic, have you had to work differently at all? <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. Well, let's say that during the first uh, the first month of the pandemic, when I would say uh, 2020 was like, you know, working on a movie set was not fun. You had to take all these tests, yeah. tests every day. You had to wear the mask. Uh, you had to, um, if if you got COVID, basically, that was like basically uh, something that was not going to make you book a job. I remember the first thing I got asked uh, when I did Monkey Man, it was straightforward. Uh the, can you do a COVID test right now? So if it's positive, you're not coming. If it's negative, you're coming. Right. So that was pretty much laid on the table. And on John Wick, I remember we needed to do like COVID test before we fly and then COVID test on arrival and then COVID test before you go to shoot. Uh, it, it was tough. And especially when you're a crew. Yeah. When you're a crew, you know, like you have to wear the mask all the time back then. I don't know how it is now. I don't think so. Because when I was in Hungary, when I did fight or flight, we didn't need to wear the mask. It was at your own, uh, it was your own choice. Yeah. But I remember back then it was tough, like when you were a crew, especially because you need to wear the mask all the time. But when you were on camera, lucky you, you didn't need to wear the mask. But I was lucky. I had a lot of these jobs when I was on camera. Yeah. <laughs> When I was in England, I did Ganapath in England, and I, I, I was uh, I, I was the main bad guy of that movie basically. But when when we were on it, I remember I got COVID on on the last day of shooting. I tested; yeah. it was pos positive. I was like, "Well, thank God, I wrapped. I don't need to. I don't need to be worrying anymore." Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Crazy. It's still doing the rounds, isn't it? <laughs> Will you see yourself returning to France or Europe? In France. Yeah, I've been living in France. It's It's been great. You know, I've been living in France. Uh, I spend a lot of time uh, with uh, my family there because, you know, uh, usually I, I don't really see them often. Um, it was great. And there was no real difference living in France. And here. just like I said, the weather and uh, feeling better when I was back in Asia because my leg in France was completely shut down. Like I felt yeah. like, you know, the winter, winter and the cold weather, it, it, I I cannot take it so much, the cold weather. So that was the only difference, yeah. Was that an old injury that was playing up because of the weather or something new, do you think? No, it's because uh, basically I saw a lot of physiotherapists. Uh, yeah. They all told me the same stuff about like, I did an x-ray and they told me, oh, you have like a, your your hamstring is you have a a tear in the hamstring the high hamstring right and i'm like well of course i'm going to get a tear here and there because all these kicks i've been doing all, all my yeah. life right so they told me okay you need to do a surgery and all that and i was like 
oh, man, I don't want to do a surgery, like no way. So I, I kept training with it without knowing the real cause. Then I met my wife and she's a next uh, she's a next uh, bodybuilding competitor. She did a lot of right. uh, physique competitions. So she told me straight, she said, okay, well, you have a muscle imbalance in the legs. So you need to exactly do what I'm going to tell you to do. I'm like, okay. So I did what she told me to do and it went uh, okay now. So I'm fine now. So I was like, man, sometimes uh, some little details, you don't know what it is. They tell you, doctors tell you, you have to go to surgery. You need yeah. to go and spend money to basically do something where a simple squat or a simple rehab with hamstring curls and simple squats will fix it. And I was like, basically this saved me like so much time because this yeah. injury, this, this surgery, it would keep me out for a year. I but, was going to say for your line of work, that yeah. is critical, isn't it? That you're in of shape, uh, you know, th- oh, wow. Um, I see that you were in the video game, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. How did all this start? Um, well, when I went back to France, I contacted a few motion capture studios when I was there. And uh, one of them was actually doing like uh, some updates for the game. And uh, they called me and uh, I got on it and uh, I played, uh, I think it was the main character. What's his name? Um, I forgot the name of the character. That's but, okay, I'll that's, link it in. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they made me do some um, updates and reshoots uh, for uh, the swords and uh, some of the dialogues and uh, not the dialogue, sorry, uh, the swords, some of the kills. Uh, some of the the actions for uh, like yeah. the fighting and uh, yeah that was cool I never done that before that was pretty cool yeah that's, wow that's that's fantastic can you see yourself going in that area of video game why not yeah, yeah. why not I, yeah I would love it uh, th- those are you know motion capture is like it's um you know you're in a safe environment you wear the suit uh you know, you have like these amazing games because today, you know, some of these games they are they have a bigger budget than movies. You know, it's yeah. they are huge. So yeah, of course, if I had the opportunity to do more of that, yeah, definitely I would be like very, very pleased to do that. Yeah. As a very active person, how do you chill out? Yeah, I need to chill out more. I need some. I, 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 I need, chill out. Yeah, I need to chill out. Like this is what many people. This one, my family and my wife tell me. Yeah, you have to chill out, man. You need to train too much. Uh, what do I do to chill out? In the past, I was playing a lot of uh, PlayStation, PlayStation right. Four. I calmed down with this because I was like, well, I'm getting a bit too addicted with this stuff. <laughs> man, uh, <laughs> Then today, what do I do to chill out? Well, I spend time with my wife. We watch Netflix. Um, we uh, we go to trains because my wife is uh, also like a, a BJJ Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioner. Oh, um, right. I'm very simple. I, I don't drink alcohol. I don't party. Yeah, I have to say, yeah. like, I'm, I'm pretty boring as a person. <laughs> like, uh, like really, I don't really, I don't drink alcohol. I don't, uh, you know. Uh, weed became legal in Thailand by I don't smoke pot. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I'm I'm boring to be honest. Like, what do I do to chill out? I train. Like, that's my passion. Like, training is one of my biggest uh, uh, biggest thing that I do in my life. You know, I, I enjoy training. You know, some people they 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 dread. They are like, oh, I don't want to go to train or I need a break. To me, when I don't train, I feel terrible. I feel like my life is not complete. And for me, like to you and to people, maybe it's not chilling out. But to me, like, for example, last Tuesday, I went to a wrestling practice. And <laughs> that was to me, that was the, the ultimate chill out plan. I was at the end of the session, I was completely destroyed. Take a nice shower, go to eat, go back home and just sleep. Yeah, right. That's how I chill out, basically. <laughs> that is so funny. I need to learn some lessons from you here. So, looking forward, what's your career plans? Uh, career plans is I'm going to try to basically uh, stay in front of the camera, get some of the of these roles that I got. I hope they come out quick because I have like basically like I have customs front line. Actually, uh, 
Monday, I'm going to Hong Kong for press conference for that. I'm going to do a press conference for the movie. Um, then, um, you know, I have also uh, Ghana Path, which is like a, a Bollywood uh, MMA movie that's coming out. Uh -huh. It's kind of like uh, Undisputed, the same style, but in a futuristic kind of like uh, place. Um, I've got uh, also Monkey Man that's behind the camera. So pretty much what I try to do now is I try to just act or be a fight coordinator. That's yeah. my goal. The, my my stunting days, I would say, they are completely uh, done and dusted. And uh, the the places I want to work, I I don't really work in Thailand. I just live here, so. I really enjoy working in Hong Kong, uh, in Europe, but I am, I'm pretty much, you know, I'm done with like doing uh, stunts and all that. That's, that's a young man's game. Let's say. <laughs> I was watching some jackass interviews yesterday and yeah. they were like, you can only do this for so this. long. Yeah. And when it was jackass four, they were all exhausted and beat yeah. them up. <laughs> Exactly, you cannot do that for. I mean, yeah, stunts like like I always say, if if you plan to do stunts for, let's say, like uh, like over over your forty years, like when you're forty five yeah. or something like that, you you get to take care of you. You have to be careful because, especially in places like Asia, because in Asia, you know, you don't have uh, you don't have unions in right. uh, in Asia. So all these years, when you when I did stunts in the past. Uh, on especially in Thailand, you're on your own. Like nobody really cares. If something happens to you, that's it. Like what's good about Europe? They have like union. Like in the UK, they have uh, they have the guild. I think like yeah. or the um, uh, the stunt register. That's how they call it. So they filter pretty much everybody who can come in or come out. So that's a good thing because then you you got to pay your dues. You got to be uh, proficient in in many things to be able to work. That that's good. I I feel, but about Asia, you know, when I was when people do stunts here, it's basically on your own. So that was something I didn't want to to hang out doing for too long because you know I, I kind of want to. I don't want to be walking on one leg when I'm 45 or something. I'm 38 now, so I, I want to be able to, I want to be able to walk straight and go to train and all that. Oh, fantastic! Thank you, Brahim, for coming Welcome. on to the Mighty Mighty Dragon again, and hopefully thank I'll you. catch up with you again sometime in the future. Take okay, care. Okay, thank you so much. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.